The reading uh, for today's session, Chris, uh, it, it takes us into so many passages that have to do with things coming apart and then coming back together again. I think of uh, section 20, the amazing question, who goes there, hankering, gross, mystical, nude? How is it I extract strength from the beef I eat? What is a man anyhow? What am I? What are you? And there's that question that in some ways is the generating question for Song of Myself. I remind us again that Song of Myself in the 1855 uh, edition, uh, the only title was Leaves of Grass. Um, it was uh, the same title as the, the Book of Poems. And it's the organizing metaphor for the poem itself. And the metaphor is, is a very deep one because it is the ecological origin of life. I mean, the answer to Whitman's question here, how is it I, be, uh, how is it I extract strength from the beef I eat, the answer is because the cow has eaten the grass. And what is the grass? Another question in the poem that we've already seen. The grass is all the dead who are now speaking and uttering in a million tongues. As that grass comes up and the cow eats the grass and we eat the cow and we die into the soil again. And so we have this endless cycle in Song of Myself of of what Whitman would later call composting. And that composting is the subject of this session. So if we are connected from the beginning of time, Adam to Adam, there is some way in which atoms are eternally being composed and then decomposing. What does Whitman do with that? Yeah, well, it, it, Whitman, Whitman, of course, writes a poem that publishes the year after the 1855 Leaves of Grass, a year after the poem that would come to be called Song of Myself was published. Uh, and that poem was a poem that eventually he would call this compost, uh, uh, a poem about compost, uh, about uh, what, what certainly struck readers at the time as the most unpoetic uh, uh, subject you could write about, a, a compost pile, and how the, 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 the entire world is a compost. We were talking last session about the, the, the way the atoms are continually moving to create what we think of as material objects, but in fact if we stand back for uh, you know, a moment in time and, 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 and run a, a, a camera across the material world, everything begins shifting. Whitman realized that if we think about the world in that way, we begin to see that literally everything is compost. He loved that word, compost, and I think the, the reason he loved that word, and it's all through Song of Myself, is it's exactly the same uh, roots as compose, right, and composition. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's one of those great words that in its roots has uh, both putting together, coming together, and coming apart. They're both in the roots of, of, of the word compost. Um, and when you think of, of composing, uh, composing a poem, let's say, uh, I think of Whitman's love of the dictionary. Um, uh, Webster's Dictionary, uh, uh, dictionary making in, in the modern sense, was something that was happening during Whitman's, Whitman's time, and he loved the idea of the American Dictionary, the Dictionary of the American Language, as uh, Noah Webster was calling it. And this new dictionary, every time Whitman would get a new uh, uh, edition of Webster's, he'd immediately sit down with it and he'd say, this is amazing. Look how much bigger it is than the last one. There, there, there are more words, and it, it, he's, he's filing into, putting into his notebooks with all the stuff he's picking up. The blab of the pave, pave as he walks along the street. He actually has notes in his notebook to 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 create a dictionary. He starts writing his own dictionary. 
uh, and 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 he he starts thinking about what the real dictionary would be, as he, he calls it, the real dictionary, which is the dictionary that would be impossible to write because it would include all of the slang usages, all of the new words that were being generated by the minute in the culture, all of the new connotations that were being added to words as they get used. In other words, instead of, of, of a dictionary as a prescriptive device, a, a dictionary is a descriptive device, you know, something that's describing the way the language is altering and shifting. For Whitman, you know, when he would look at the dictionary, he would say, here it is. This is the compost heap of all poetry. It's the compost heap of everything that can and has been written. Right? And will be written. And will be written. You know, the language will continue to grow. There will be terms that we don't know now that someday people will write. But all of the poems of the past, if you break them down into their elements, they're all here. Here they are. And this is what we're continually doing as a poet. We are we're reading the poetry of the past and breaking it all down and reconstructing it as a poetry of the present. Just as the, the fossils that are being discovered around this time uh, are pointing him back to the beginning of time on the physical level. So the language is that other part of what belongs to us from the beginning of time. Absolutely. This is why Song of Myself becomes the first poem uh, in history to have a dinosaur in it, yeah. right? <laughs> it, because dinosaurs are a 19th century invention. Uh, the, 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 the theories of time and the theories of evolution that would allow the interpretation of fossil records to generate dinosaurs that all is happening in Whitman's lifetime, and he's he's seeing he's seeing the world just explode open and explode open in space and time, astronomical discoveries, geological discoveries, uh, uh, evolutionary discoveries, all that were just just blowing this uh, 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 record of of what had seemed a very constricted biblical time and space into a massive scientific time and space that allowed for everything and anything to happen. What was the reaction of readers when they saw the poem called this compost? <laughs> uh, it, it, it was again part of the outrageousness of Whitman. Uh, you know, but what, what, what Whitman did in, in that particular poem was uh, create an eye at the beginning of the poem that was repulsed by the world. There's so much death in the world. This was a theory that was going around at the time um, uh, that 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 because the population had increased so dramatically, deaths would increase so dramatically, and pretty soon the entire world would be a burial ground just made up of corpses, and the the, the decaying corpses in the ground would create a miasma of bad air all over the world that would lead to the decay of, 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 of the human race. And Whitman plays with that eye that is just saying, oh, I'm repulsed by this world, and then he digs into that soil where all the corpses are, and he says, Oh my God! Look what's growing up out of that. You know, here comes the spring. Here comes new birth, and then the rest of the poem is a catalog of all the things that are growing out of death. And so, every poem he would say that I write is a compost. It's a composition. It is a poem that grows out of the taking apart of every poem that has come before it. And it leads me to think that some years hence, uh, after the, uh, not long after the publication of the first edition of Song of Myself, Lincoln will be consecrating that hallowed ground at Gettysburg where so many young soldiers uh, lie buried uh, for eternity. And what Lincoln will do in the Gettysburg Address is to try to create a new vision of the United States. And it seems to me that's what Whitman is doing from the start with this notion of composting. Yeah, yeah. He comes back to that notion of composting at a very uh, crucial moment in his career. And uh, it's at the end of the Civil War when he tries to deal with the fact of a million dead soldiers. He has a section in 
his book called Memoranda During the War. It's called The Million Two Dead Summed Up. And I always think of it in relation to Lincoln's Gettysburg, Gettysburg Address because um, in, in, in that poem, uh, it starts as a poem and then turns into the longest prose sentence that Whitman ever wrote, which turns into a fragment. <laughs> it turns out not even to be a sentence. Um, but it, it begins with the subject, the dead, and then it begins to describe and count up the dead and sum the dead up. Right? So the million dead too summed up, summed up in the sense of here are the numbers, here's the data, but also summoned up. Right, you know, pulled up out of the ground into the future. Into the future, because, as Whitman says in that passage, in every grain of wheat we eat, in every breath we draw, we're going to be the atoms of those dead soldiers. Now they literally are our sustenance. We have to make our future out of this death. And if we stand back now and say, "I'm repulsed by what I see here," the future stops. It is only by continually overcoming that initial sense of revulsion at death and seeing that things grow out of it, that futures are made out of death, that we move on. And they're made out of remember. Made out of remembering. Yeah, exactly. Remembering.